ओके सो टुडे अगेन आर टॉपिक इज प्लियोमोफिक एडिनोमा ओके सो इट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू द सेलिब्री ग्लैंड विल बी डिवाइडेड इन टू टू द मेजर एंड द माइनर मेजर वी हैव थ्री सेलिब्री ग्लैंड एंड माइनर वी हैव लॉट्स ऑफ सेलिब्री ग्लैंड सो नाउ कमिंग टू द मेजर सेलिब्री ग्लैंड मेजर सेलिब्री ग्लैंड वी हैव थ्री वन इज योर पेरोटेड देन यू विल हैव योर सब मैंडबुलर एंड देन यू विल हैव योर सब लिंगवल ओके सो अगेन लुक एट द डायग्राम you have your parotid gland here this is your parotid fine then you have your submandibular and then you have your sublingual again i'm showing you this is your parotid then you have your submandibular and then your sublingual okay <coughs> again see you have your parotid okay near the ear you will have your parotid below the mandible you will have your submandibular and then below the tongue you will have your sublingual gland now these glands they have ducts okay the parotid gland is has a duct called as a stenson duct okay this here this is your stenson duct fine then after that submandibular gland it has another duct called as the wharton duct okay this is your Wharton duct, and then you have your sublingual. So remember that you have three major salivary glands. Okay, minor salivary glands we have plenty. Major we have three salivary glands. One is your parotid. Okay, parotid will be here. Fine, near your ear. You already know all this from your anatomy classes, but this is just a revision for you. Okay, so parotid gland you have. Which has a duct called as the stenson duct. Then below the mandible, you have your submandibular gland, which will have your Wharton duct, and then you have your sublingual gland. Now, histologically, also you would have learned that all these three glands they have different morphology, right? So your sublingual, the sublingual below the tongue, it has a mucinous acini. It is predominantly made up of mucinous acini. okay then your parotid it is made up of serous acini okay and your submandibular it is made up of both mucus uh, mucus and as well as serous okay so this sums up sub uh, sublingual parotid and submandibular sublingual again i am telling you it has your mucinous acini parotid it has the stenson duct and the morphology histological morphology it is serous acini sub mandibular it has the wharton duct which has a mixture morphologically it has a mixture of both serous and mucinous okay so just for you to know okay this is a simple diagram which is showing the duct okay this area this is all the ducts and then you have the acini surrounding the acini you have your myoepithelial cells this is a diagram of your how histology of a normal salivary gland is okay so see again you can see the duct fine you can see the duct here and then you can see mucus or serous acini okay depending on which uh, of which salivary gland you are seeing you can see mucus acini or you can see serous acini and near the mucus and serous acini see this myoepithelial cells these are the myoepithelial cells which you can see here up okay the flattened myoepithelial cells here you can see this flattened ones okay in the diagram see you can see your mucinous above the mucinous you have your serous serous this pinkish one is serous and then you have the myoepithelial cells this myoepithelial cells they will be flattened flattened okay normally so now i am showing you histology of a normal salivary gland okay this is just revision so that you can easily differentiate between a normal salivary gland and a pleomorphic adenoma so here what can you see here you can see this in your practical classes we would have already shown you that you have your adipocytes right this is how adipocytes look like vacant vacant spaces fine and then you have your acini all this blue cells these are your acini okay this blue areas are your acini this areas are your blood vessels blood vessels you can recognize with the reddish rbcs inside okay there is a clot here okay. then after that you have we will concentrate in this box okay look here in low power okay in scanner when you are looking you will see something which is very 
pinkish and something which is light pinkish so we will concentrate on what it is so when we go to low power we will see that now this this cells this areas all these uh, cells with uh, which are with eosinophil granular eosinophilic cytoplasm which you can see all this everything all this round round cells now everything of them are serous sni okay all of them are serous and this are your mucinous sni in mucinous sni you have you already know mucus mucin uh, how it looks like mucinous cells it looks like the cells are filled with mucin and the nucleus it is pushed towards the base okay see this mucus cells and then these are your normal ducts fine so we are seeing in a higher power it is not very clear but understand the difference between the serous cells and the mucus cells okay see the mucus the serous cells they are having a granular eosinophilic cytoplasm in comparison your mucus cells they are having they are vacant okay they are very empty looking right because they are filled with mucin this is a better photograph for you see here you can see all the serous sni this is a duct and this is again your mucus cells okay mucus sni see serous mucus you can understand the difference right and then you can see some flattened cells around all this are your myoepithelial cells fine look here the flattened cells which you can see all this are your myoepithelial cells so parotid i had told you it will be composed predominantly of serous cells so you can see all the serous sni everywhere all this are your serous sni this is your duct okay so you can make out difference between a serous cells mucinous cells and that of the duct okay so this is again i am showing you in parotid this is your serous cells so sub mandibular i had told you it will be composed of both serous and mucinous right so you can see there are few serous cells and this is a low power picture you can make out right that this are serous this are mucinous mucinous more vacant you can compare this sublingual is mucinous mostly composed of mucinous so when you are comparing sub mandibular and sublingual you can see that it is made up of both mucinous as well as all the serous cells fine again this is this is the duct fine here you can see the mucus cells in minor salivary gland they are mostly made up of mucus cells see all this vacant looking all this i have told you mucus cells so now we will come into the main topic our topic today is your pleomorphic adenoma so what is pleomorphic adenoma it this definition is from your robins you have to know this they are benign tumors okay and they will be composed of a mixture of ductal that is your epithelial and myoepithelial cells and that is why they will show epithelial and mesenchymal differentiation so don't worry just remember that it is a mixed tumor which has both epithelial component as well as the myoepithelial component i showed you the epithelial cells and the myoepithelial cells right so there will be it is a benign tumor which will involve both the epithelial cells okay all this epithelial cells also it will involve as well as the myoepithelial cells it is getting involved okay as both your epithelial and myoepithelial cells are getting involved it is showing epithelial and mesenchymal differentiation now this neoplasms i have told you they are mixed tumors because both types of cells are getting involved fine so now we will come to age group it usually uh, the age group of 30 the 30 to 50 years okay they come with a swelling fine and females are more involved than males then in parotid parotid you will commonly see a pleomorphic adenoma 60% of the pleomorphic adenoma are from your parotid okay sub mandibular in comparison is less and minor salivary gland it is very less so most commonly patient will come with a swelling at the parotid region okay now etiology when we see the etiology actually we don't know much about the origin but 
we have an idea that radiation exposure it increases the risk now i have told you what is the nature of the tumor it is a benign tumor okay now what is the cell of origin cell of origin we actually don't know uh, uh, very clearly ki what is the cell of origin so histogenesis is uncertain what used to happen is we used to call it as a mixed tumor because there was a mixture of both epithelial and mesenchymal components right i have told you in the beginning it is there in the definition only but now what happened these tumors now we are considering that these tumors are that of the myoepithelial or ductal reserve cell origin okay now they are considering that these tumors are of myoepithelial or ductal reserve cell origin another thing which we see now is there is plg1 over expression chromosomal uh, rearrangement is there okay in chromosomal re rearrangement what we are seeing there is plag1 over expression so what does plag1 over expression do just remember that this over expression leads to cell growth okay so what we came to know initially we used to think that it is because of, it is a mixed tumor because there is a epithelial and mesenchymal component we see in the tumor right but now they are telling it is because of the myoepithelial cells or because of the ductal reserve cell origin other than that but remember that histogenesis is still uncertain okay and then after that you just have to tell them about plag1 over expression if you remember this much more than enough now we will come to morphology okay so in morphology grossly it looks round okay it is round in shape and usually it can be more than 6 cm in diameter so what is the consistency consistency it usually de depends on how much epithelial or the stromal component is there so usually it will be rubbery okay or resilient mass what is resilient mass tough mask and bosulated surface bosulated means it will be lumpy okay it is a lumpy surface when you palpate it usually what happens is this is important it is a well circumscribed or capsulated tumor usually what happens we will see that around the tumor there is a nice capsule okay nice capsule around it so what happens the surgeon he can remove it okay he can remove this very nicely and that is your treatment but sometimes what happens this tumor cells it protrudes into the surrounding tissue okay the capsule sometimes sometimes the capsule is not well formed sometimes there is no capsule and this tumor cells it can form finger like projections and it can infiltrate into the surrounding stroma so what happens if it is like this the tumor sometimes it is not removed properly okay see some tiny projections it will be left inside and this will lead to recurrence so now we are seeing grossly see here you can see at the angle of mandible you can see that there is a swelling okay so now you have operated it we are going to see the cut surface cut surface you can see it is a gray white mixoid okay mixoid appearance is there and then it will be blue glistening translucent this areas this area it has a blue glistening right this is entirely it is glistening a bit shiny shiny it reminds you of a cartilage okay normal looking cartilage this diagram is from your robins okay in robins see here they have given a very nice parotid swelling you can easily make out that there is a parotid swelling and then when you see cut section it is gray white very hemorrhagic here okay so we are coming to microscopy so what is the there is characteristic appearance of pleomorphic adenoma okay there is a pleomorphic appearance one is you are seeing neoplastic cells which shows varying mixture of epithelial tissue and then you will see also mesenchymal differentiation we have already discussed that in the different in the definition only 
so now we will see that the epithelial element okay this epithelial element it resembles the ductal cells or the myoepithelial cells the normal ductal cells or the myoepithelial cells it looks like that and these cells you have to see the arrangement how it is arranges it will be arranged in ducts in acini irregular tubules strands or sheets it can be arranged in anything it from acini to ducts to tubules to sheets it can be any arrangement now these ducts they can be lined by both epithelial cells will be surrounded by myoepithelial component okay then we can also see plasma cytoid or spindle myoepithelial cells spindle uh, cells you know how spindle cells looks like elongated cells like what is plasma cytoid plasma cytoid is it looks like plasma cells okay here yeah. plasma cells look like this it will be larger in comparison and then after that it will have a uh, the nucleus it will be peripherally uh, peripherally placed okay just remember it looks like a normal plasma cell so it is called as a plasma cytoid cell okay appearance then we can also sometimes see squamous epithelium now the mesenchymal we have already discussed about how the epithelial component will look like okay epithelial component will can look like anything it will resemble that of the normal epithelial cells myoepithelial cells it will look like that and it can be in any arrangement i'll show you the photographs you will be able to understand them then mesenchymal uh, element is also present right this mesenchymal element it can be present as anything it like your mucoid tissue it can be present as a hyaline tissue like chondroid that is your cartilage tissue as bone fragment as mucoid matrix as anything it can be present okay so you are seeing epithelial cells and background also in the background you are seeing the mesenchymal elements but no matter what there will be no epithelial dysplasia now that you have seen in your practical classes you have seen how adenocarcinoma ductal cell carcinoma uh, breast carcinoma everything you have seen how atypical how aggressive the features are those features will not be present when you look into the microscope you will see that this looks very normal okay and then there will be no mitotic activity less mitotic activity okay more mitotic activities are seen mostly in malignancies so here i want to show you the capsule i told you right about the capsule usually most commonly these tumors they will have a thick form capsule this entire region is the capsule okay these are your epithelial cells this see the blue ones are your epithelial cells this pinkish areas which you can see these are your mesenchymal elements fine epithelial differentiation mesenchymal differentiation again here you can very well appreciate that this is the tumor part okay this is the pleomorphic adenoma part this is your capsule and this is your normal fine here even if it is in low power even if it is in low power you can make out that this dark blue roundish appearing areas these are your uh, serous acini right see when you we cannot uh, zoom much but still you can make out right these are your normal appearing cells fine see these are your normal appearing areas here you can make out that there is a duct also so this is in low power you are seeing see here you can see adipose tissues right you can see adipose tissues and here when you are seeing the tumor areas look how haphazardly it is arranged sometimes maybe okay to an unexperienced inexperienced eye you can think it to be a normal uh, gland also okay but you can see the difference right ki how haphazardly this is arranged and how beautifully this is arranged right but there is no aggressiveness there is no atypical appearance which will be there in malignancy here again i am showing you this areas these cells are all your epithelial elements okay and this is all your mesenchymal elements okay this is having a bit hyalinized look this pinkish look right this is having a 
cartilaginous appearance okay you have all seen normal cartilage when uh, you are doing your histology in first year this looks like that and this area this entire this area it is all your epithelial elements see you can understand that there are this cells which are resembling which are like your normal epithelial cells of salivary gland see here you can understand appreciate better this is arranged in a tubular snr pattern sorry this is arranged in a snr pattern see you can look at the blood vessels okay this is your chondromyxoid matrix okay cartilaginous matrix and this is your epithelial this is your epithelial component this is your mesenchymal component fine again i am showing you your epithelial this is your uh, this is your sorry mesenchymal element this is your epithelial element and here you can see some myxoid areas this area is your myxoid area this area okay again see look here it here it is arranged in sheets okay this arrange this arrangement you can see it is solid pattern or you can see it in sheets it is present okay here i showed you snr pattern here also you can almost say that this is in sheets here see how your cells are arranged okay and then look at the background okay you have this is your mesenchymal component fine here again epithelial cells this is your uh, mesenchymal elements myxoid appearance was there see this strands you can see right this is your myxoid appearance okay this again epithelial component this is this resembles a bit like that of your normal looking serous cells right so that is why it is uh, we have already described it initially only that the epithelial component will look like your normal epithelial cells uh, myoepithelial cells right and then you will have your mesenchymal elements in the background so this diagram a bit easier for you to understand see this are your tumor cells which will have a cuboidal or columnar looking and then you will have your spindled myoepithelial cells these are your spindled myoepithelial cells okay and here you can see myxoid like just think that this is all myxoid tissue in the background as well as you have a cartilaginous component okay so you have all seen but again i am showing you so that you can easily make out see the capsule see the epithelial component again this is normal looking this area is normal looking salivary gland this is your capsule this is your uh, pleomorphic adenoma area okay epithelial components this is your mesenchymal background which is myxoid this is showing your cartilaginous area okay cartilaginous mesenchymal component is there then you can see your epithelial arrangement in sheets again cartilaginous area with cells which are now arranged in snr pattern mesenchymal component again with myxoid areas sheets of epithelial cells then epithelial cells again with myxoid area see there are myxoid areas okay again the same thing fine so you will not get confused now what happens is nowadays if there is any swelling so we uh, ask the patient to do an fnac in fnac also just remember you can also again see the epithelial and myoepithelial cells okay look here the epithelial cells and the background they will look fibrillary okay they will have a fibrillary edge like feather okay imagine that it is like a it has a feathery appearance okay this is the myxoid fine so now we'll come to the clinical features in clinical features it is painless the patient will not have pain he will have it is a slow growing tumor it is mobile if you try to palpate it it moves a bit fine and it is a discrete mass within the parotid or the submandibular area or in the buccal cavity 
now i have told you that if it has a nice capsule okay if it has a nice capsule and you have done parotidectomy then recurrence uh, what to say it will be better removed and your recurrence rate will be around 4% but if sometimes your capsule is not well formed and then you have projections okay you have this minute projections so what will happen you will not be able to remove it properly okay that is called a simple enucleation fine you have not you have just removed the contents you have just removed the contents so some tiny projection is left inside so what will happen your recurrence rate will now increase to 25 percent so then we will come to a entity called as carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma okay what happens is this is a carcinoma which arises from a pleomorphic adenoma it is a malignant mixed tumor okay it is a malignant mixed tumor what happens it is said that if your uh, the longer duration you have the pleomorphic adenoma there is chances of malignant transformation fine so when you see microscopically it will have the features of your adenocarcinoma or an undifferentiated tumor this malignancy what happens is it has a very high uh, runover okay uh, turnover like what happens is the pleomorphic adenoma which you are seeing it will be completely replaced by this malignant cells so it is very different uh, very difficult to make the diagnosis of pleomorph uh, carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma because we want to see in whenever we are seeing it in under microscopy okay we have to see both the features of your pleomo of your adenocarcinoma as well as your pleomorphic adenoma then only we can tell this as a diagnosis of carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma okay but what happens is mostly as this uh, it is very highly infiltrative it grows at a very uh, fast rate okay so your pleomorphic adenoma it is the areas of pleomorphic adenoma it will be replaced by this carcinomatous cells and also this are very aggressive and your mortality rate is around 30 to 50 percent at five years so we will revise very fast we have your three major salivary glands that is your parotid submandibular sublingual okay and then most commonly your pleomorphic adenoma it is seen in your parotid then sometimes you can also see in your submandibular region also uh, gland also now age group is 30 to 50 years females are more affected than males and then you also have to remember about uh, plag1 overexpression which leads to increase of cell growth okay grossly it will be round then uh, when you do a cut section you will see that there are glistening mixoid areas are present okay you can see a capsule also fine and then when you are seeing a uh, histology you will see the epithelial components okay the epithelial cells as well as the mesenchymal component which can be mixoid to cartilaginous to hyaline areas and then this tumors sometimes it can undergo malignant transformation that is called as carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma but to tell a diagnosis of carcinoma x pleomorphic adenoma in histology you should see the features of both carcinoma it can be adenocarcinoma it can be undifferentiated carcinoma as well as some areas which will be showing the features of pleomorphic adenoma then only you can give this diagnosis okay, okay. thank you